Hey everyone, I'm TJB Chris. Welcome back to the channel again, and I'm here to do a quick video on this, my Tandy 2500 SX25. Previously seen two videos ago, chronologically. This video is going to be short, but in the first video I did on this machine, the intro, I said this. So that was a worth it upgrade and really brings this thing up into about the best it can be for what it is. The eagle-eyed and eagle-eared amongst you may have realized that that wasn't exactly accurate. And by wasn't exactly, I mean it wasn't accurate. That's because of this other thing that I pointed out in the video. And of course, there's a 386SX processor on here. There's my coprocessor socket. There's my AM. Yep, there's an empty coprocessor slot in this. So when I said this thing was everything that it could be stock, I lied. Well, I've got a fix for that. I've got this. You can't really make it out with the reflective cover on there, but this is a 387SX25 coprocessor, math coprocessor for the machine. Practically, this is going to do jack because most applications don't use the coprocessor. So for day-to-day -day performance, meh. But it will actually give the machine the maximum potential that it would have. And the goal here is to get it pretty much at max potential for what it could have been back in the day. Um, you know, artistic license for the hard drive size. Anyway, let's get this machine apart and get it installed, and then we'll test it out. All right, let's give it the Scrabble Take Apart treatment. All right, so we have our coprocessor slot. I see the notch for pin one in this slot here. I'm just gonna see if I can unwrap this. We'll just do it on camera here so you can see me unwrap. Isn't that great? Okay, so looks like we have, let's see what we got here. Yep, there goes the notch. Notch is right here, pin one. We're just gonna press this into the socket. And I do have a socket puller, or PLCC puller, I should say, if this doesn't work. Okay, math coprocessor installed. Let's test it out. Naturally, to test this out, we're gonna power it up with the machine open first. Just make sure it powers up. I'll let the RAM test go this one time. Excellent, okay. The machine seems to be booting. I'm pretty sure the Microsoft Diagnostics can see whether or not there's a math coprocessor installed, so we're gonna start there. Ooh, computer, Tandy 80386, 80387. And math coprocessor, 80387, that's excellent. All right, let's get it back together and we'll see if we can find anything to exercise it. There we are all back together. Isn't she lovely? All right, let's see if we can get anything else to identify and or exercise this coprocessor. All right, I think the easiest way to test the math coprocessor is really to just use check it, right? I mean, I could install a spreadsheet on here and try and get all clever, but like I said, games and regular applications aren't gonna do it, but check it should both identify it and also try and put it through its paces. So let's see if that'll happen. I really should just add it to my menu, but you know, we'll get there. Okay, found stuff. All right, so let's do this. Let's say, let's do the benchmark on the system. That should give me the entire thing. There we are, determine math speed with the 80387, which it sees quite a bit faster. You know, if I was smart, I would have done a benchmark without the math coprocessor enabled. But uh, yeah, I didn't think to do that. So, so I think that proves the point. 80387 works, it's enough for Check It to exercise it. So I'm gonna call that good enough. I'm not gonna install anything to go digging around spreadsheets or anything else. Like I said, the day-to-day -day performance of this machine is not gonna be affected much at all, really, by having the math coprocessor, because most software games, etc., Windows, you know, WordPerfect isn't gonna use it. So I think now I can state that this machine has everything in it out of the box to make it reach the maximum of its potential. 
And I mean, compact flash card aside, this machine does have the XT IDE Universal BIOS. And back when I had my 2500 RSX in the 90s, I did have a Promise EIDE Max controller in there to extend the BIOS to allow large drives in that. And I had a Gig.2 hard drive in there. And it also had an interface for a secondary IDE bus, so I could plug in CD-ROM drive into that. But, I mean, as far as 90s upgrades, it's not really out of the realm of possibility for a machine like this. So barring some overkill fancy pants sound card or some weird overdrive upgrade in terms of what you could expect the machine to do if you took it out of the box and plugged in cards and stuff without getting all fancy, I think we've reached that point, and now the machine has the coprocessor. All the little holes are filled in. Woohoo! So that's going to do it. Thanks for watching me, and join me next time when I don't know what the heck we'll be doing, but we'll be doing something fun and something with a Tandy computer. Stay classy.